All right. Okay, 2020 coaches meeting. Um, so first, first things first, uh, I'd like to welcome you all. Appreciate you taking some time out uh, this evening, um, you know, to step in here and, and listen to, to what I have to say. Um, this slide is really important, okay? So, you know, it's my cell phone. You all should have that, all right? But um, my home phone, I know that's silly, but I still have a home phone. Um, put that in your phone because I turn my cell phone off when I go to bed, but I don't unplug my home phone. So if you have an emergency, whatever, you're on an overnight trip or something and something happens, um, you know, feel free, call that, please, you know, if it's an emergency, okay? Um, and you, that way you can always call or, or text my cell phone and you don't have to worry about waking me up at night because it's off. Um, the uh, uh, Coach Lane, Dorian, I think he, are you on here? I don't know if I saw him on there or not. Okay, yes, I'm on here. All right. You, most of you, I think, know uh, Dorian uh, came on board last year, you know, his full time at St. Joe's. Um, he, he's uh, assistant athletic director. He helps me uh, cover evenings especially. But but you've already noticed one of his new tasks is uh, chasing coaches training. So you've probably gotten an email from Dorian. But uh, uh, go ahead, Dorian. You can say anything you want there. Oh, yeah, just um, uh, guys, just whenever uh, you can, uh, go ahead and knock out the problems. Uh, I know how tedious it is, but once we get those done, the quicker we can get everything started. So I appreciate your cooperation in that. Hey, Dorian. Yes. Uh, Mebby said she didn't get one, an email. Okay. And, and I'm actually, that. I've got a follow up question. Uh, just like the faculty where we could kind of do the test ahead of time and then we could test out. Can we do that with the coaches videos? Not with the coaches videos. Okay. Yeah. I'm you got to watch. Yeah. Not, not, you can, the you can the safe schools. Yeah. yeah we, yeah, schools, that, we know but, that. Yeah. But not the, not the NFHS. Okay. Yeah. I wish yeah. we could, but no. I know, right. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, thanks. So there's uh, so Dorian's phone number again. Um, that's a good one to put in your phone because especially if he's covering me, you know, for me in the evenings, um, you know, you can give him a call. Uh, next is, uh, is Becky. Um, she's on vacation. So I, I, uh, I requested that she not come tonight. Uh, I think she's doing something. So she, she's been working like a champ this summer helping me out with all this COVID stuff. So um, she will not be here tonight and it's well deserved. Um, but you, you all, mo all of you that have been there know Becky and how awesome she is. So big help, couldn't, couldn't do it without her. Um, rules of the meeting, I, we already talked about this, okay? Um, you know, it is recorded and just chime in. Um, Katie uh, Stovall is our athletic trainer. She started uh, some, I don't remember the exact date last year, I think, but she was here for spring sports. Um, you know, Kate, Katie and Katie again. So you that have been here a while, you know, um, if it's a female, it's got to be Kate or Katie, I think, is what Prism, Prisma's doing. So, uh, but, but Katie's been great. Um, she'll, she'll speak here in a minute. Her cell phone is up there. That's her work cell phone. So again, you know, she, she was uh, on board, you know, y'all have that for sure. Call her, text her, her email, you know, that's our general trainer email now. So if we do change trainers, um, you know, it'll always be that email from now on. Um, you know, re really appreciate, you know, what Katie does, you know, is, is invaluable to the program uh, and help, helping the athletes um, and, and helping get, get them out there faster. Um, the the one thing I'll ask you, she'll probably say this too, but and, and I'm guilty of this sometimes too, um, is communicate. You know, so put her on that chain of communication when, especially when practices change, 
or cancel games change because you know the worst thing you know makes me feel terrible when I walk out late and she's still there to find out that she was waiting on a practice that never happened um so you know let, let's let's do our best uh you know for for that not to happen so but uh Katie I'll I'll let you I think you're uh oh wait where is your slide well that's that's your yeah. go ahead you got it I mean yeah he basically covered it um if you haven't met me yet this is my face um I am certified and basically I'm just here for you guys and the students anything that you need please don't hesitate to ask even if it's you I don't, I don't know, out of this world, you couldn't imagine asking me, ask me, it wouldn't hurt to ask. All I say is no, or I don't know, and we'll figure out how to help you from there. Um, and then communication, just everything comes down to communication, like he said. Um, again, the coaches have to be there, the athletes have to be there, an administrator, and then the athletic trainer. Those are the people that have to be there, including, I mean, you let the parents know and everything, but I just would ask that you do include me on game changes, uh, practice changes, whatever it may be. Um, if you have any questions, I kind of went through the, the concussion stuff with the parents. If you have any questions, if you're a new coach and you're not familiar with the concussion protocol, I am willing to explain it to you. Um, what else? Oh, Planet High School, Eric. I don't know what you wanted to say about that, but I've gone on and I've it's just something that I like to do. I go per team and I look at every single physical and I kind of document who I want to keep my eyes on. So the asthmatics, diabetics, um, people that have kind of chronic conditions, people that we want to keep our eyes on. I have a master medical history list for each of your teams that I've already done. I've been very bored <laughs> this summer. So I've already done that. Um, and I just ask that you, if you, you do have access to Quinn High School, just go be familiar with your athletes. Um, know, again, who needs an inhaler, who doesn't need an inhaler, um, who needs insulin, who doesn't need insulin. And again, if you have any medical questions about that, I am here for you. Please use me, please. Um, I think that is all I was really going to say. I have kind of a first aid kit I've made I've tried to make for most of the teams that I've already worked with. If you don't have a first aid kit to keep with you as a coach and with the team, let me know. I can, I have more bags. I have more materials. I can make them up. That's for away games, uh, random away practices. I'm not sure um, what all you guys are into, but I'm willing to do anything y'all need. I'm here for y'all. Thanks, Katie. Um, what I'll talk more about the Planet HS. I've got a slide for that. Oh. Um, the the other thing um, is, you know, with the concussion, two things with the concussions. Um, you know, if you're not sure and you think somebody has been hit, and you know they're a little woozy, any of that, you know, our first first reaction is is to be safe, right? So remove them. Um, I've got to send you all, this is, I got to send you all two things, especially fall coaches, but really all of you. Concussion uh, statement, you know, uh, protocol that you all have to sign, read and sign. I need to send you all that and I need to send you your, you know, this year's coaches agreements. Okay. Um, you know, right, just on the front end, you know, all those are going to be the same as they were last year, you know, just with budgets this year I, I don't even know what the budget is yet um so that that's what i've been asked to do so but i'll send you those um the one caveat in the agreements this year uh you know it says in there if your sport is canceled you know obviously you're you're you won't get paid for that this year okay last year we you know we massaged it out in the spring you know for those because it was so unexpected but if you started your season or started training, you know, if you started working with those athletes, we'll prorate it out, right? So, you know, if you've done half the year, you'll get half the pay, right? So, um, but I'll, I'll send all that to, to you all individually. Um, 
So the other thing, so concussions, the other thing health related here is the, uh, is the lightning app, right? So for those of you that are outside sports, okay, if you haven't done so, you need to download the My Lightning Tracker app, okay? It's a little, um, here, I'll show you. Um, whoops. So it's this app. You see the lightning bolt? That's what it looks like, okay? Um, and it's a cool app. Like, um, this is what it looks like when you pull it up, all right? So that's around my position, right? That that um, that yellow circle is 10 miles. So I've set my settings, right, to do a 10 mile circle, okay? And if there's a lightning strike, you can also set it to notify you to your phone, all right? So it'll notify you, you can get on there, you can look, if there's a red or a yellow dot in that circle, then you've got a, a strike within 10 miles, which is what our radius is. So if it's within that, you know, we need to get kids and fans, you know, indoors, okay? It's a great app. It's the best one I've seen that's, you know, especially that's free. Um, and, and so all of you that are outside especially need it. You know, and, and personally, it's not a bad app too. Like that's, that's what I use to decide to take my kids out of the pool, you know, so it's kind of a, kind of a, a good app. So, all right. Eric, can uh, I say one more thing? Yes. Uh, it's daily about doctor's notes. Um, I know there are peculiar parents that like to send their kids to the doctor for every little thing. And that's fine. I, you can't change how they're parenting, but I would just like to emphasize, I'm kind of the middleman between like, the nurse, Katie, and like a doctor, I can I can refer you directly to um, the orthopedic surgeons at uh, Stedman Hawkins. It's an easier way. I can set up schedules easier than them calling and trying to set up a schedule. And again, if it's an ankle sprain or something pretty minor that I can work with, I'd much rather me see out the entire injury instead of sending them to a doctor and the doctor sitting them for however long. I'm sure you. The athlete's going to want to get back. You're going to want to get your athlete back. And it'd just be an easier process if you come through me first. Um, and then if we do need to go to that next step. Oh, yeah. Keep Lonner again. It's on, this, on the screen. If we do need to go to Dr. Lonner again, we can definitely do that. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. Just emphasize, please, Katie first. And then if we need to go to the hospital or ER doctor, then we can do that. Thank you. All right, um, team team physician Keith Lonergan. Most of you, if you've been here, know know Keith. He's a parent, um, does a great job for us. Um, you know, and that's that's for you know if it's an orthopedic type injury, that's who you know we would refer the kids to. Um, he, he's going to kind of understand this whole process better than just Joe Schmo Orthopod. You know, so um, so that's that's who we want to try to get people to see because um, he knows athletics and what's required, you know, that type of thing. So um, next up, um, Bob Costello, you know, those of you that have been here know Bob. Uh, if you've lived in Greenville for the lot, any time in the last 30 something years, you've, you've seen Bob's name. Um, he's done a tremendous job, um, you know, for us, uh, getting out updates last year, our website stories, uh, you know, if you look at the website, you've seen the last, since Bob's been here, it's just been a tremendous difference. Um, you know, especially for athletics, uh, but, but overall in general, he's done an outstanding job. So, uh, Bob, I know you're on here, go ahead and unmute and. How about it? Okay, thank you, good? Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, good evening, everybody. Nice to be with you all. Thank you for the kind words, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, I, I, this is just my second full year at the school. But as Eric said, I've, I've been around here. Um, 
knew a lot of the coaches before I got here. Um, I'm a director of communications at the school. Um, but as Eric said, I, I can't lie. This is what I like best, um, where I'm most comfortable. I covered sports for a long time. Uh, covered high school sports for a long time, 20 years at the Greenville News. So actually, I didn't know Zach. I didn't know you were helping us coach. I covered Zach at Christ Church. So um, nice to see you, Zach. Uh, I didn't realize you were helping us out there. But uh, anyway, um, uh, number one on my hit list is um, I just like to hear from everybody so that I can keep everybody updated. Um, so that's two things. Either feel free to let me know yourself. Or um, what I always advocate is a uh, team parent, a mom, a dad, uh, get somebody involved and let them do the work for you. Um, I know we have, I guess it's Casey Velke this year is the in charge of the, the, the team moms, team parents. Um, so you know, wh whatever works best for you, just get somebody or get yourself, whatever, um, email me. Um, it's bcostello at sjcatholicschool.org. Um, uh, if you want, feel free. I, I don't mind you texting me, calling me. I'll give you my cell phone. Whatever works for you, um, get the information to me. And I just want to get the word out on your teams, your kids. Um, it worked pretty well in the fall. We did a pretty good job in the winter. And of course, we didn't have a spring. So um we, we did a pretty good job though last year so i'm looking forward to getting it going again this year um and you know if it, the the best thing is to hit it up early and if you need help with you know if you, if you want to know well what are we looking for email me and i'll be glad to say here's what i'm looking for and i can get you a little rundown of what would be best um, obviously we have a lot of sports especially in the fall and the spring so um, th the more the better, but if we can make it concise, that's probably the best thing so that we get the important information out there. Obviously, we we'll want a lot of names so that we can get the kids in there, but we want the highlights. Um, and honestly, it's important whether you win or lose to get the info. I know not every team wins every game, but even if you lose, it's nice to have, you know, Johnny and Susie's name in there because they're still doing good things. And so uh, even if you lose, it's nice to get the names out there and say that people did some nice things. Um, and along with uh, the results, hey, if there's anything else going on as far as just some people doing some good things, let me know. Maybe we can do a story or anybody that uh, does anything as far as milestones, records, highlights, let me know that as well. Um, and as far as postseason, that's especially the time that it's nice to hear from you as far as what's going on, because that's when people really like to jump the bandwagon and follow along. Postseason playoffs, postseason, you know, whatever's going on, you know, on the way towards state. We have a lot of great teams, do a lot of great things. So um, we want to know what's going on, especially when it comes to that time of year. Um, and with sports, especially as much as anything, um, social media is huge, um, Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, you know, whatever. We, we like to get stuff on there so that people follow. People seem to, we, we had a, a lot of positive feedback last year from people saying, hey, it's great to know what all these teams are doing. Um, so, and, and it, it wasn't me as much as, you know, I was putting it on there because I was hearing from people. So um, whatever I can get, I can pass along. So the more I get, the more I'll put on there. And that's what people want to see. Um, again, um, you know, it's great to hear from everybody. Um, and, and like I say, as, as soon as you get to me, I'll be glad to work with you and let you know what we'll be looking for and my contact information, whatever you need. Just you know, reach out and I'll get back to you. Uh, thanks again and let me know what you need and I'll be glad to help. Thanks, Bob. Um, I, I think what's, what's one of the things that's been great, you know, having Bob is that when people are sending him stuff, you know, he, he's pretty, pretty good at getting it up and, and quickly, um, you know, which I think is why the parents are more likely to send him stuff. You know, nobody wants to send stuff into a black hole. Um, so I think, uh, I think, you know, Bob's done a tremendous job. And again, you know, appreciate that. And, and everybody understand, you know, we, we all got a million things. So it, it, just because he doesn't get every single thing, you know, um, keep, keep sending it. So, 
appreciate that. Anybody have any questions for Bob? Because I don't think he probably wants to stay for the rest of this. So, <laughs> anybody? All right. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate you. Sure thing. Thank you. All right. Um, so I was in some continuing education classes at the uh, athletic department or athletic directors meeting. And I, uh, in one of my classes, they, they brought up this, these two slides uh, about the 14 legal duties of a coach, uh, which I'd never heard before. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard this. So I, I really felt like during that meeting, this was something I needed to share with you all. Most of it's kind of commonsensical, you know, uh, things that, you know, you, you all are great coaches, things you're already doing, okay? But uh, again, I felt like uh, I needed to share these, so I'll let you, you read them, right? But, um, you know, I, th I think properly planning, you know, that's having a practice plan, um, you know, and that, that's mainly gonna fall on the head coaches. Um, supervise closely, you know, we have to watch the kids, right? You can't, um, you know, that one time that you don't is the time that a kid's going to get, you know, hurt, something's going to happen. You know, I, I've heard a story a couple years ago, there was like a football practice or, or a football workout. Nobody at a, at a school, people weren't paying attention. Like a kid like broke his neck or something. Or, or maybe it was soccer. I don't, I don't know, but you know, and, and nobody was there. Right. So it was like an off season workout, you know, so like, that's all, that's a nightmare. Right. Um, you know, we don't want that to happen. Um, safe environment, you know, all of us are, are a piece of that, you know, looking around, make sure, you know, everything's uh, in, in order, you know, that there's not some spike sticking out of the ground that could impale somebody. It, you know, just things like that, you know, let's all keep an eye. If you see something that needs address, it's a safety hazard, you know, come to me, okay? Um, evaluating athletes, I, th I think we do a great job of that, you know, especially there with concussions. Um, equipment, uh, I think you all know you can come to me for that. Uh, instruction, duty to condition properly, right, again, that's not something I would worry about at all with, with our coaches. Risks, uh, emergency care, right? That's one of the reason we take these classes. We have these emergency response plans that are in the coach's handbook that I'll send you. Um, that's also our CPR class and certification, okay? Emergency supply uh, response plans, I just talked about those. You know, helping our coaches, um, you know, develop. Uh, again, you know, especially our younger coaches or new coaches, you know, if there's anything I can do to help, um, you know, but this, that's one reason why we have this meeting, right, is, is for, for step 11 there. Uh, matching athletes, right, especially in your contact sports. So, you know, if you took a little skinny sixth grader and put him up against a Hoss uh, eighth grade, you know, your best player and put them on a board drill in football, like you could, you know, that's dumb. Right. So, um, you know, especially in contact sports, you know, lacrosse, football, soccer, wrestling, you know, but but, you know, I don't know. There might be some other situations in other sports I can't think of, but um, matching athletes. That's what that's talking about. Safe transportation. You know, um, part of that's on me, you know, but but part of that is also on on you all as coaches. Um, uh, making sure like when we leave an away game, right? If a kid's signing, signing out or you have a text from their parent, you know, the parents got them, right? That's part of safe transportation, not letting a kid just leave with some, some stranger, right? Um, and then an insurance disclosure, that's in our, in our medical forms. So, so that's that. Just wanted to share that. Felt like, felt like I needed to, um, just so everybody knows. Um, all right, COVID, you know, COVID really stinks. Um, it's a real pain in the butt for a lot of reasons. Um, I don't have all the answers for everything, um, but I do know, as you all would expect, I'm sure, you know, 
transportation is going to be different this year and difficult. Okay, it's going to affect some, you know, some of our teams and our ability to transport people. Okay, right now, the the recommendation from Molly Spearman, you know, superintendent of the state, is 67 percent capacity. Right, so that's like 32 on the big bus, nine on the little buses, right? So for a lot of our teams, that kind of renders them useless, you know, um, or changes the game, right? So maybe they'll change that. Um, honestly, you know, I mean, well, I, I hope they change it, you know, but, but I'd like, you know, maybe we can wear masks and, and have one to a seat or, you know, I don't know, but we're going to follow, you know, whatever the guideline is. All right. Does it mean nine athletes plus a coach? Um, no, that'd be nine passengers. So if the coach is driving, it could be nine, right? But but nine nine passengers. So um, so that's gonna you know it's gonna cause some issues. You know we're probably gonna have to count on parents more than usual. Right. And I said that to them the other night. So um, and I would hope that's not a shock to the parents, you know, with all this stuff going on. Um, I know it's going to be a pain, but um, I mean, it just it, it is what it is. Um, so I don't know how we're going to handle it quite yet. But uh, and then overnight travel um, is not going to be a great idea right now. Right. Um, Unless, you know, I've talked to, to one of our coaches, if, if they're going to go and stay with their parents the whole time, you know, in, in separate rooms, like I may listen to that possibility, right? But the idea of putting two or, two or three of our kids in the same room just defeats what we're trying to do, you know, as a school. So um, I, I'm always willing to listen, right, to what you might propose. But just understand in general, probably <laughs> until there's a vaccine, you know, overnight travel, probably, probably not a great idea. So maybe okay. do you have a question? Yeah, I do actually. Um, so the, for middle school, and this might pertain to more people this year, the parents have always had to get them to the games. Like I've never done transportation unless it was like in Spartanburg. Right. But, but usually you have a couple of parents who volunteer and they carpool a bunch of the kids. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be responsible this year for making sure? Like that's probably not going to happen either. If you can't put, like, I don't, I can't see a parent even in a big suburban putting six kids in it this year, right? Or if they do, so I guess my question is: Is that part of the school slash coach's responsibility to be sure that they travel appropriately, or is that we're just going to leave that up to parents and kids? Well, when we do that normally, we're passing the buck to the parent, right? Because right we can't set it up because then the school would be liable. Right. right. So I think it's the same thing. You know, okay. if, if we're leaving it to the parents. If they're not comfortable doing it, they won't do it. Okay. Right. Okay. That, you know, that's but, I just wanted to know. Yeah. But like me personally, I'm coming to school every day and I'm going to have six students carpooling with me because now my daughter's yeah. at the school, you know, I got, you know, so like that's me as a parent choosing like it's just a practicality of life, you know. So, right, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I think we're just gonna have to leave that up to the parent. Now it may you may have some that won't do it, and so yeah, it may make things harder, you know. Okay. Um, and we're just, you know, I'm just crossing my fingers that you know, saying our prayers that it just works out, you know. But but it it may be harder. I'm you know probably will be. Yeah, and we don't, I don't drive kids in my car um, because yeah, I don't want to no. get the insurance for it. Mm -hmm. But if a coach was driving kids in their car, would they then have to do the distancing like we do in school since the coach is driving them? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I mean, in general rule, coaches shouldn't be right. driving kids in their car. I'm doing what I was saying is I'm carpooling, I'm a parent. Oh, I know. Yeah, you're yeah, coming you know, from Spartanburg. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, in general, like if you're going to drive kids in your car, you probably need to ask me first, mm -hmm. you know, like that's in general, probably not a great idea, you know, unless it's an emergency. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, speaking of this, you know, I think tomorrow a little birdie told me um, we're going to get a new set of guidelines from the high school league um, that uh, I think is going to look like a staggered start for our fall sports where, you know, potentially swim, tennis, and, and golf will start on the 17th with practice. And then maybe on the 24th, volleyball and cross country will start. And then maybe on September 8th, football and competitive cheer, which we don't have. So, um, but I hope to have those by the end of the week, you know, cross country, that's pushing you back and volleyball. Um, so we're gonna have to redo the schedules for seems like the 15th time. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'll send that out as soon as I get it, right? But just to give you some warning, um, I don't think what we think now is going to be the same after tomorrow. So, um, and again, with all this, like if you guys, if you all have questions, like contact me, right? Because, you know, there's so much stuff going on with this. You know, I, I, I can't think of everything, right? And if you don't say something, I, I may not be thinking it or I may forget, right? So. Um, you know, feel free. You can always do that. Yeah, All right. I, I have a question. It's back to Marie's question. If tennis yeah. is starting the 17th, am I limited to 16 people at that time? Well, I, I think they'll have some other guidelines before then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is what I would expect. I hope they'll speak on that tomorrow. But I fully expect there at least to be a phase two, I would imagine, by the 17th, which I would hope is going to grow those groups even bigger. But that's yeah. that's speculation. But like I, I mean, I, I feel like they got to change that before you actually start. But but yeah, but again, this is one of those I, I don't know yet. Um, but my feeling is. I would imagine so that okay. they'll that they'll fix it, you know, by then. Okay. But but again, as we approach, you know, let's you know make sure we talk about it. Um, all right, league info. Uh, I'm gonna kind of skim through this kind of quickly, but you know, I, I just want to reiterate, you know, we went through that lawsuit. Most of you know. Um, and, and have been successful, but you know we're we're one of only four private schools in the league. You know, out of 219 schools, um, you know us, Christ Church, Southside, and, and Bishop England. So, you know, we we are different, right? And um, you know, and then there's the private school, the public schools, and then the charter schools, right? Who are different as well. So, um, you know, we just went through reclassification. You know, we stayed in 2A, but our region changed. Okay, uh, which is here, All right? Last year we had 49 teams, 14 different sports. Okay, so uh, 762 team members, right? So a three-sport athlete counts as three in that number, right? But I'm at, you know, think we we got 400 and like 40 kids at the school, right? So that's almost you know, almost two to a kid, right? one point something team members, right? So, you know, what we're doing as coaches is is important here, right? You know, these these things we're trying to teach the kids and, and the lessons, you know, we, we're getting to influence nearly every kid at the school, right? And, you know, that's a cool, that's that's a really cool thing and, and something that we shouldn't take lightly. So and I and I know y'all do a great job and you know just all I ask is let's all just try to find a way to be just a little better every year. Okay. Um, there's the region, right? I'll let y'all read that. And then our middle school conference is below. All right. Um, which we added Southside Christian is now in the CMSC this year. All right. Which is actually convenient, you know, cause they're closed. All right. Uh, Legion Collegiate is only in our conference for football. I'll note that there. OK, so all, all other sports, they are not in our region. OK. All right. Last year's accomplishments. Right. I had to put we would have won the cup had it been issued. Right. 
um, you know, we, we would have would have beat Christ Church by 10 points, which is the, the slimmest possible margin, right? Um, but, you know, would have been our seventh and eighth year. So we're kind of claiming it with an asterisk. Um, volleyball and boys swim had outstanding years for us, won the, won the championships. And then girls swim and girls cross country, um, you know, finished runners up, right? And so this is just for for fall and winter, you know, spring didn't didn't have that opportunity. Um, but uh, but really proud of of all of our accomplishments, and uh, let's let's keep up the great work. Um, you know, it, what we want to do, like I just touched on, touching all all of our students. You know, we want to we want to be educationally based athletics, right? So what does that mean? Um, you know, we're trying to develop more than just athletes, right? We want to you know, we want to in, develop a student athlete, right? We want to develop them, you know, to have good character, right? Our school mission, right? Forming the, the hearts, minds, and souls and the likeness of Christ, right? So, you know, that's what we're trying to do. That, that's the ultimate win for us as coaches, right? And, and I know all of you, like, that's what you're, you're interested in to be here. You're, like, you're probably not here for the money, Right. Okay. So, um, you know, like that's why we do this as, as coaches. Um, so, uh, you know, let, let's, again, let's keep that in mind, right. Let's show, you know, teach the, the kids how to show respect for the games, rules, officials, opponents. Um, you know, we, we don't want to cut corners and rules, right. That's not giving them a good lesson. And I know y'all don't do that, but, um, you know, you know, some coaches that do right across the state. So um, let, let's let's be a shepherd. Let's let's show them the right way. Um, that's that's important. Um, you know, these other life lessons, you know, goal setting, how to lead, follow. Right. Th those are skills. Right. How to do those. Um, you know, sacrificing for your team. You know, I, I've got a slide, you know, about hard work, but you could put sacrifice in there too. You know, I mean, man, if, if, if we could teach them nothing else than that, right. How to sacrifice themselves for others. Like that's a big part of this obtaining the school mission. Right. Um, you know, and there's maybe no better, you know, ways to safely do that, you know, than, than sports. Um, and same thing with with overcoming adversity, right? And how how to fight through that and 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 get up after you've been knocked down, okay? So so I came up with this, you know. I mean, it's not rocket science, but you know the the chance of success graph, right? So a, along with overcoming adversity and how to sacrifice, like if we could teach our kids this, right? that the more amount of work I put into something is going to increase my chance of success. It's not going to guarantee it, right? But it's going to increase my chance of success. George, I know you're studying this, you know, as, as a math guy, right? But, you know, I, that's why I didn't put, um, I, I didn't put, you know, the, uh, the scale, right? Because, because then you maybe could have reached some hundred percent, right? But, uh, you know, it's going to increase your chance of success, right? And so if we can, if we can teach them that, look, if, if I'll go out and I'll work and I'll put in the time and, and do my best, right, I'm going to have a better chance to succeed, you know, and, and please do not tell them that's going to guarantee it, right? Because, you know, we all know that that's not the case, but it's going to give them a better chance to succeed in the classroom, on the field, in their personal life, you know, down the road as a mother or a father or a grandparent or, or whatever it is. So, um, you know, this, the, I just felt, felt like I needed to put that in there. Um, so, uh, sportsmanship, you know, again, we need to be a beacon of this, um, you know, and, um, uh, if you've ever seen me on the sidelines of a football game, you know, I'm speaking to myself here too. Um, you know, we all, uh, we all need to, to, to try to do a great job with this. All right. Um, setting a good example, you know, not, not getting too mad at the refs. Um, uh, I've been known to do that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, let, let's really try to preach to the kids, you know, that they're a, uh, a beacon of the school, right, for not only, um, you know, on game day, but in the community as well, right, to, to represent us um, in, in the right way, right? Um, so there's coaches' role, athletes' role, fans' role, right? So I told this to the parents too. You know, they have a big part in this as well. Um, you know, we can either be, when there's a bad situation, we can either be a catalyst, right, and make it worse, or we can diffuse the situation, okay? And we've had two incidents the last two years, right? Two years ago, girls basketball against Blacksburg, one of their girls comes and throws a haymaker. Natalie, I know you're on here, almost hit her in the head, right? She was She was in the line of fire, right? And you know, so how, how do we handle that? Like our kids, right? And I think our team did a great job. Um, but, uh, but one thing we learned was one of our players kind of backing out of the way, stepped on the court, which is not allowed. And she ended up having to be suspended for a game, you know, so that there was a lesson learned. Okay. Um, this year, lacrosse, boys lacrosse, you know, one of their Wade Hampton's players was pummeling one of our guys on the ground you know, being a complete jerk, uh, should have been thrown out immediately. You know, we had a few kids that just didn't react well, right? I hate they were put in that situation. It's not their fault, you know, but, but didn't react well, right? So it led to some, some other ejections, right? Lesson learned, okay? But, you know, the, the key, if we can learn from these incidents uh, and help keep them from happening in the future, you know, that then we've done something. So, um, so coaches, you know, we play a huge role in that, right? Again, you can diffuse or you can be a catalyst, right? Let, let's try to, let's try to be diffusers, right? Um, uh, safety supervision, we talked about this a little bit earlier, right? But, but we've got to be supervising before, during, and after all of our events, practice, walkthroughs, games um, until those kids are off campus, okay? Um, you know, must stay with them, right? I see, you know, unfortunately, I see a lot of kids hanging out, right, after practice and, and nobody around, right? And I often find myself having to stand there with, with those kids, okay? So, you know, that's our job as coaches, you know, make sure don't let them wander off on you, okay? Keep them, you know, where they're where they should be, and you know, just make sure they've got a ride, okay? And that that'll mean the world to those parents too that that we do that, right? Um, and then the last one there, right? Do not put yourself in a position where you're alone with a kid, okay? You may be the best person in the world, right? Like all of you are. But all it would take is one allegation, somebody alone with somebody else, and, you know, now you just, you're in a fight, right? And it's just not worth it, okay? Um, none of us want to be in that situation, okay? So either have two kids or better yet than a, two adults and however many kids, okay? Um, that's the best situation, you know. I, we've had a deal before I, you know, I had to do this once I'm standing there with two kids. Uh, one parent came and picked up one and I asked that parent to, Hey, well, you just hang out until, you know, Johnny's ride comes. Right. Um, you know, so again, pull in another adult and in my experience, our parents are actually glad to hear us do that. Right. Cause they know that we're watching out for their kids. So, um, so just, Please remember that. Uh, hazing, right? Uh, I've not heard of any of this go on at our school since I've been here. Hope it's not. Um, if it is, you know, we, we got we to gotta get on it real quick, okay? If you know something's happening, you need to, to let me know um, and, and keep me abreast of the situation. Um, and, and we need to get that, you know, put out in a hurry, okay? Um, you know, again, if you hear of it, you know, whispers of it or, or whatever that case may be, you know, let, let's, 
let's make sure we're talking immediately, okay? Um, transportation, you know, we talked about this is a non-COVID transportation slide. Um, you know, um, I'll let y'all read that. Um, you know, we try to, I try to normally provide transportation as best we can to, you know, like this year we got Blacksburg, Landrum, and Chesney, right? In our region or, or, uh, middle schools still got Spartanburg and, uh, Spartanburg day and Spartanburg prep, right? I, I try to do the best we can there. Um, and, and you know, uh, but again, this year, you know, it's going to be a challenge. Try to notify the parents of transportation needs as soon as possible. Give them at least a week, right? Because it is, especially this year, you know, it's it's going to be tough, right? Um, so try to let them know as, as soon as possible. You know, usually I'll email you all, you know, transportation needs, right? And I create a schedule, okay? Um, you know, and so I, you know, I should be getting you that is, you know, in plenty of time to let the parents know in most cases, if not, you know, get with me. If I haven't communicated with you, you're probably not on the schedule. So, um, just, just make sure. Okay. Help, help me help you. All right. Uh, let me ask a question here because students are constantly asking me, can they drive themselves and can they drive another student? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, we have, I mean, we, we have students drive all the time in some sports, you know, um, again, them driving another student, that's gotta be, you know, that's not us arranging it. Like don't ever tell, Oh, Hey, Jimmy, will you take Johnny right in your car? So, you know, we just, stay out of that you know that's up to the parents you know if they don't want them to do that then we'll help them you know if we can but okay. uh, you know and again this year it's going to be even harder so um but yeah we don't want to arrange personal transportation because then we would be liable okay so Um, new last year, right? If you are driving the minibus, you have to have a DOT physical, right? Which we'll pay for. Um, you know, it's, it's not that hard, uh, to go do. It just comes down to if you're comfortable, you know, driving, driving the minibus, right? You know, um, and those, most of those DOT physicals are good for two years. So, if, you know, if you got one last year, it's probably good for two years. They can just pass you for one year. Um, but, uh, but we'll, we'll let people know if you need it, but I think most of you are probably still good because we just started it last year. So, but, uh, but if you want to do that, if you're willing to drive the minibus, you know, let me know because we're always in need of drivers. All right. Planet HS. This is something I didn't do a good enough job with last year. Um, Planet HS, you know, the kids got to do all their forms, right? The medical forms, physicals, all that. Well, all of us as coaches, especially, well, really the head coaches, you have got to know how to log into your Planet HS, uh, you know, on your phone, okay? Because those of you that have been around, I know in the past, you got a binder when you went on a trip, right? that had all the physicals and the emergency release forms and all that, right? Well, so Planet HS has taken away the need for that binder, but it's only good if you know how to get in and use it, okay? So here's the question you gotta think of. You're on the road and Johnny's gone down all of a sudden and somebody starts asking, oh my gosh, what's his, you know, has he had a, uh, heart problems in the past, you know, and all that? and we're freaking out, right? Well, that's where, you know, somebody should be pulling up Planet HS to be able to answer those questions. It's there, right? You pull up that kid, you can find their medical forms, okay? All right? Pretty easily, all right? So all of you, head coaches especially, um, and if you're a head coach of a big team, you might want to have your assistant know how to do it too, okay? Um, 
And if you, you can't figure it out, come by and I'll show you. Uh, it's really easy to do. I would say leave that browser up on your phone, right? Leave that as one of your pages that you have up, Planet HS. And, you know, if you got an iPhone like me, I do it, pull up Face ID, bam, I'm in, right? Um, so, that, so that is something. If you need help with that, contact Becky on, you know, your login and all that. But we have to do that. And you can also use it to find out if your athletes have finished their forms. Right. There's a series of check boxes you can see for each athlete if they've got them all done. Green, they're good. Red, they had something wrong or blank. They hadn't even tried it. Right. To, to fill it in. So please uh, know Planet HS inside and out. Uh, fiddle around with it one night when you're sitting on the couch. It's it's really, really friendly. OK. All right. Eligibility. Um, you know, we got to do a great job. This this year is going to be even harder because I'm sure, you know, we haven't had a chance to do interest meetings. Um, you know, we uh, the the window we're going to have to get this stuff done is going to be super compressed, right? So especially you first few sports that are going to be playing tennis, uh, um, golf, and uh, swim, like. We're going to have to have this stuff probably real soon. Um, and I got to make sure all of our transfer kids are done um, and, and all of that. So, so help get us, you know, an initial roster and then a final roster as soon as possible. Um, Becky, uh, Becky has, has created a new eligibility and rostering component that's in the handbook. Um, and so I'll be getting that to you soon, okay? but but really communicate heavy with this you know uh, for us uh just talked about that so two weeks prior interest roster then preliminary roster and then the final roster okay we have to have those final rosters submitted before you play a contest if we don't you know we'd have pay a fine if we play a kid who's not submitted we might have to pay a big fine okay and potentially forfeit the contest okay so you know please please don't don't let that happen okay and help me not let that happen here's the required forms for the athletes all this is in planet hs physical history birth certificate uh acknowledgement stedman hawkman hawkins permission to treat form uh, all that they must have all this stuff done before they work out try out or practice okay first day of practice or workout first you know you ought to be going around on your planet hs making sure all your kids have got their forms done okay again that'd be a big liability if not coaches requirements we talked about this earlier safe schools this year uh, you can opt out. I think if you've done them before, that was a huge uh, plus. Um, NFHS Learn, uh, you got to do those, right? Those are all free, except the fundamentals of coaching. If you're a varsity head coach, right, um, uh, for the first time and you don't work full time at the school, uh, you've got to suffer through this class. I'm sorry. Uh, Jim, Jimmy Freeland, um, I hadn't even mentioned this to you yet. I'm sorry. Um, like you're going to have to do it. Uh, I'll give you more info, but that's a long one, but you only got to do it once. Okay. And it's got a fee, I think 60 bucks, but we'll reimburse for that. Um, and any other first time varsity head coaches? I'm, I'm uh, 45% of the way through that or something. Oh, you've already started. Outstanding. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> Suffer is a good word, right? Thanks, Google. That's accurate. Hour, seven minutes. <laughs> um, all right, a absence policy. Um, you know, th this is uh, this is our our policy. If um, you know, if a kid for any extracurricular, right, they've got to be there at least the last four academic periods on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. The two, the three long days. And then the last two academic periods, Wednesdays and Thursdays, are short days. So if a kid's not there, 
for that amount of time or they leave to go home early because they're sick or whatever, then they can't play, they can't practice, they can't do band, they can't do a play, right? You know, any extracurricular, all right? Okay, and I'll try to give you all a heads up. I know some of you, I've, said, I've called you, said, hey, so-and-so is not here, you might wanna call them, um, you know, I, and I'll try to catch those for all of you. Um, some of them I know better than others. All right. Wait, Eric, I'm sorry, can I ask a quick question about that? Yeah. Okay, because I didn't know, like in the past, it wasn't like the last four periods, because if they have an appointment, say third period, and they're out, and then they, but they've been at school all morning, or they're, they're having a, right. they can, they can do that, right? Yes. Yeah. If okay. they have like okay. a dentist or a doctor's appointment, that's a different story. This is more like, gone home sick or on signing out early and yeah okay like random stuff yeah but no and, like those instances would be fine and the present is if they're off on a school field trip that counts as being present correct okay thank you yeah yep. good question uh academic responsibilities um you know they're they're students first right student athletes you know, there, there's going to be some things that come up, right? Tutoring, um, you, you know, what they got to make up a test. You know, occasionally that's going to happen. Um, and I gave this slide to the parents, right? Um, and, and they've got to meet their academic requirements, right? But, you know, in yellow, right? I also said, you know, they got to let you all know, right? Don't sneak attack you. Oh, five minutes before. Oh, I got this, right? Again, that comes back to, you know, the, the lessons we're trying to teach them, right? How to be accountable, okay? Um, you know, so, so I would talk about this first day, you know? Like, you need to be at practice, right? If you have a good excuse, let me know, right? And we can talk about it, okay? Be a, be a you know, be a grown-up, you know, uh, kid, you know, and, and, and address an adult, right? All of you are reasonable people, right? And, um, you know, uh, th that's what I would expect us to do, right? And I, I'll, I'll defend that with you, right? You know, help you, you know, because that, that's just the right thing to do, okay? Uh, but, but again, you know, academics do come first, but, you know, let, let's demand that communication and, and, you know, for them to anticipate that stuff. Uh, practices, um, you know, try to give parents, you know, communicate, communicate, communicate. I got a communication slide coming up, right? Give them too much info, okay? Um, starting in practices on time as best you can. Um, uh, you can see all that. Uh, hold the kids accountable to come to practice, uh, you know, like we just talked about, right? But, but get them the info as soon as possible. Use Team Snap, um, uh, use Band, uh, Group Me, you know, whatever it is that you want to use. Okay. Make sure that the families know what they're getting into. Okay. And then, you know, demand it. Right. Um, you know, I know that I've, I've had a few instances, you know, where kids don't come to practice. Right. You know, tell them on the front end. Make them sign some kind of agreement if you want. Um, you know, this, this is what we're doing, and you need to be here for this stuff, okay? Um, and, and then demand it. And if you have issues with that, problems, right, kids aren't doing stuff, you know, let me know. I'll help you, okay? And, you know, if it comes down to it um, and they don't want to come to practice, you know, we can remove them from the team, okay? We don't have to letter them. Right. We don't have to uh, we don't have to give them P.E. credit if they're not doing what they're supposed to do. OK, um, you know, but help me, you know, get me involved if that becomes that big of an issue, just so at least so I know what's going on. OK, but, you know, but demand, you know, um, that, that they, you know, do do their job. Um, I, that's that's not asking too much. I don't think. Coach. Yes. Coach. Yeah. And that's just for like official in-season practice, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We can't do that for voluntary. Yeah, good question. Yep. 
So that's in season activities because out of season, you know, open season, those are voluntary, right? So, um, so we can't, you know, do that kind of stuff. Okay. But I, yeah, I'm talking in season. Good, good question, John. Thanks. <clears throat> and then down here at the bottom, if a kid quits one team in the fall, they can't go join another team in the fall, right? Or any season, you know, winter, winter, spring, spring. Right. Um, you know, we wouldn't wouldn't allow for that. And if you you know, if I'm missing one of those, you know, let me know. Right. If you hear about it and I'll um, I'll get involved. All right. Communication. I touched on this earlier. Um, you know, let the parents know. Use one of these apps. Check your St. Joe's email, you know, as much as you can once a day right and respond please um i know some of you have personal emails and i know who you are because i usually send it to both and i you know i probably shouldn't do that and i should probably demand but you know but i i need you to get the info but it sure would be easier if everybody would use the saint joe's email okay um it, it's a lot easier on me not having to remember and chase and oh did so and so get it right um because you know the older i get the harder that's going to be to remember um all right call versus an email right um you know don't send an email when you need to call okay don't send a text when you need to call okay um a lot of you know loss gets a uh, lot gets lost in translation email and text okay so, you know, use a call when a call is needed, all right? That's just a bit of advice. CEO method methodology, for those of you that have multiple levels, right? You know, I ask that the, the varsity head coach, you know, is gonna help the other levels, right? JV, middle school, um, you know, as much as possible. And some, some, of, some of you do better with this than others, right? Um, and I know it, it's pretty new concept, um, but but I, I see I see some really good things happening with the the uh, sports that are using this concept. Okay, and I, I think it's going to make us uh, better overall, and I think it's really going to help our especially our middle school teams, um, you know, develop. Um, you know that they 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 might know that that. Uh, you know, uh, varsity head coach is, is paying attention to them. Um, that, that can go a long way. Um, so parent concerns. Um, I went over this with the parents. You know, this is kind of the uh, chain of command type thing. Um, you know, they the student needs to go to the head coach first, right? That's what I told the parents too. Um, then the parent, you know, can get involved if that doesn't work with that coach in private, right? And then, you know, if that doesn't work, then then the, the CEO, you know, the varsity head coach can get involved and then then it could come to me, all right? You know, the, the more we can stick to this, I think it's better for all of us. You know, again, this comes back to accountability for the kids, learning how to talk to an adult, right? instead of running home and and complaining you know just go talk to the source um you know and i know there's a lot of parents that are going to let step one get skipped you know we all know that right as much as we can try try to make step one happen you know and that's us as a coach if you see you know little susie is having a bad day or something right you know you could see it go talk to them and you know, see if you can address it, and then maybe it doesn't even go to this, okay? Um, but, but you know, let's try to do that. Um, and then I told, you know, told the parents this, right? You know, it's, it's not really, well, it's not okay to discuss playing time, play calling, strategy, or other kids, right? Um, you know, and, and, like, let me help you. If somebody is starting to do this, um let me know right and i'll help uh i've done that a few times um you know i'm i'm pretty ugly but i'm big 
and you know usually I can step in the middle of something and 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 help you know that that's that's one thing that I can do um you know uh and I've had to do it once or twice you know with a couple of parents already so uh just you know to diffuse the situation right uh, don't be a catalyst let's try to diffuse it right um you know so it, you know it's it's not okay for parents to to do that right um you know so so let's hold them to that and i told them you know i told them them this as well so um and then this is big right for us as coaches you know this is to protect us okay <clears throat> you know let after a game you know don't have those conversations you know wait at wait 24 hours where everybody's got a cooler head and then have those those conversations right so don't do any of that parent or student talking until 24 hours later right let let everybody calm down um and uh you know it's it's going to be way more productive okay and everybody's going to stop from hopefully saying stuff they wish they hadn't said so um pre-game post-game responsibilities you know help set up the field the facility you know i i try to help y'all as much as i can uh some days i got a little more time than others um but but i really need y'all's help to to set up um, you know, you, you can get with Katie, she'll help you, you know, if you need stuff, let me know, like those that paint fields, let me know if we get low on supplies, um, you know, help me help you, you know, but make sure you're there early enough to make sure the field and the facility is what it needs to be. Okay. Um, cause, cause again, I just, I can't remember and anticipate everything. Um, and, and I really count on y'all to, to, to help me and um you know and then let me know if you need something um same thing with our transportation with the buses you know uh make sure we clean it after um and, and demand i like, get the kids to help you i don't want y'all doing it or or you do a little but let them do their part right again that's just leaving it better than we found it right that's another great lesson that we could teach teach the kids Tryouts, not very many of you do tryouts, right? If you do, make sure the process is super clear, right? Here's the expectations, the dates. This is how, you know, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, make it up front, clear. Um, it just makes things way easier when you have to cut a kid, okay? Never just cut one kid, okay? Um, you know, if we're down to, you only have to cut one, you know, let's try to find a way to keep them, okay? Um, if it's a uniform issue, something like that, let me know. You know, if you're having trouble with tryouts and cuts, you know, come talk to me. I may or may not know anything about what you coach, but I'll try to help you however I can. <clears throat> Team uh, volunteers, you know, you gotta have a good, team mom, team dad, team parent. It just makes things way easier. Um, find a, you know, if you can find a good one, they're worth their weight in gold. Um, you know, so uh, I just encourage you all to do that. Doesn't matter what the sport, what the level, you know, find a good team parent and you, you will, you will hold on to them as tight as you can. But one thing here at the bottom, you know, don't have your team mom do what the head coach should be doing. You know, um, that's happened a few times. Like, let the team mom or team dad do do that stuff, right? But you know, the, there's certain things that the head coach should be doing. Okay, and and make sure we're doing those things. Okay, um, preseason, postseason, you know, um, again. Make sure the expectations, you know, the kids know the schedule, you know, give them all those possible postseason dates so you don't end up where, you know, little uh, Johnny's going on a family vacation in the middle of the playoffs, right? Because, oh, it wasn't on the schedule, coach. You know, just throw all that stuff out there so they know. Um, uh, 
and um, have a postseason event, right? Gathering, banquet, party, you know, whatever. Again, your team parent, I bet they'll plan it for you. Um, but but have something and, you know, uh, especially if you're varsity and have seniors, you know, make it a positive experience. Even if it was somebody that maybe didn't do a lot, find something that they did well and recognize them, right? If, especially if they've been ones who have been busting their hump. Um, you know, recognize them, find a way to, you know, to, to go out on top, okay? But even middle school levels, um, you know, let's, let's have a celebration at the end because hopefully everybody did something worth celebrating, even if we didn't win, you know, win a championship. Uniforms, um, uh, for those of you that distribute uniforms, again, here I need your help. Um, it's a head coach's responsibility to make sure we got enough uniforms, right? If you don't, come ask and I'll help you figure it out, right? We'll order what we need. Um, you know, we, we're blessed to have, a, you know, the ability to do that, okay? Um, and then head coach, you're responsible, responsible to distribute and pick them back up, okay? One thing, some, some sports, we don't do a great job of that. Okay, so if I had to pick something that we could be better at, maybe it was uniforms. Okay, uh, making sure we got what we need and make sure we get them all picked back up. Okay, um, let, let's let's make that one thing we do better this year because I, I don't want to waste money on missing uniforms that we could use on something you know useful. Right, uh, let let's not you know waste money. Um, cause we got plenty of, plenty of wants and needs that we could use that money for. Technology policy. Um, this is in the handbook, right? In general here, I'll let you read it, but you know, don't do stuff dumb on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, goes without saying, y'all know this, you know, be smart. Um, you know, don't. Um, don't go down that path, right? You know, let's let's represent St. Joe's just like we want the, the students to as well. Um, I'll let you y'all you know, read through those. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Practice and game music. Um, wow, sometimes I'm just really surprised by what I hear. You know, I know a lot of the music is really bad these days. You know. Um, well, it's always, there's, there's been times it's always been bad, but, um, you know, let's find the good stuff. And, um, you know, if you got a kid that's picking the music, um, let's find, let's find that kid who's really responsible. That's going to do the right thing. Otherwise, you know, uh, you all pick it. Okay. Um, because there's nothing worse it's happened to me. I'm standing up there watching a game and some song gets played and somebody looks to me like, what are you allowing? You know, so um, try to try to avoid and help me with those um, as best as possible. OK. Senior send off uh, honoring our seniors. You know, it's a ceremony. But the uh, the game is not a cer the ceremony, right? The ceremony is before or after, or dur you know, halftime or something. Um, but you know, you're you're not obligated, you know, to necessarily play that group of seniors, you know, the whole game and and all that, right? Uh, now, if you can find a great way to do that, that'd be awesome. But you know, usually senior send off is in the middle of the playoff run or um, fighting for a region championship. Uh, you know, so, um, you know, the, the game is not the ceremony, all right? Uh, and, and I told that to the parents as well. So, um, but find a good way to honor those seniors. I think that's important. Right? Multi-sport athletes are encouraged, okay? We, if we didn't have the 762 team members, uh, we wouldn't sniff a Carlisle Cup. You know these kids wouldn't get a wouldn't get to have some of the great experiences they get to have by playing on all these different teams, right? So please don't discourage multi-sport. Encourage it, right? 
Um, I know we all want to hoard our athlete. Oh man, I'd love them to be this and just that, right? Um, you know, studies have shown medically it's not what's best for them. It's better to play different sports um, and work different muscle groups, right? And, and I think mentally it is too, right? To, rather than just playing the same thing over and over, you know, you kind of you kind of get burnt out after a while. So, you know, encourage them to do other things. Sports funding, uh, St. Joe's, you know, we pay the coaching stipends and salaries, transportation, officials, field maintenance, all that stuff, right? We're fortunate to have a great, uh, you know, great ability to do that. Uh, our booster club, man, it, they're second to none, I'm convinced. Um, just do a tremendous job. They're, they're easy to work with. We've got the golf tournament Friday. Uh, with we got a waiting list on the golf tournament to play, right? Um, I mean, just we got such great folks and a great community. We're, we're just blessed. Um, and, and a booster will help with some of those unbudgeted items. You know, I try to find low hanging fruit for the booster, like big stuff that, that may affect multiple teams. You know, that they, they really like to do those kind of projects as best we can. Um, you know, I've done some scoreboards that, that help a lot of people. They do, uh, they bought a, I think they helped with a bus a few years ago, the weight room floor, um, the, the gym chairs that are really nice. You know, we got those this year. Um, you know, they, they've done a tremendous job. Um, and, and they help all sports, right? Not just, you know, certain sports or revenue, and revenue sports. You know, we try to find ways that they can affect everybody. Okay, um, we have, these are our fundraising efforts, right? The golf tournament is number one, which is wrapping up here. It's go game time on Friday. Um, that's a way to raise funds because people that, that sign up or sponsor can, can designate your team. And you should have received that email or info from us about that. So I hope you encourage that, right? That's a fundraising effort. It's gonna go, uh, you know, the profit off of that person right, is going to your fundraising if they listed your sport, okay? Otherwise, I'll distribute it um, around to, to make sure every, every sport gets a little something, okay? Um, and then the banner program is another thing, right? We've got that program that can put the banners on the different fields, right? So even if you're a swim team or cross country, right, you know, why? that you know why I'm why would I hang a banner in baseball what well, doesn't matter the money will go to your sport if they designate it okay um so you know they can hang it in whatever place they want or all five of them all the fields and stadiums you know and that that's going to go the profit you know will take out the cost of the sign and then that money is going to go into your fundraising account okay that's different since I've been here it used to go into like had to use it for facilities or whatever. Well, now all the, all, both of these are dumping straight into your fundraising, okay? So you can have some, some ability to do some different stuff. <clears throat> and I can help you track that. You know, I get a printout once a month uh, with all that, okay? Conflict of interest, just try to stay out of it. You know, it, it comes when maybe you coach an outside team or, you know, I, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe somebody, I don't know, sells Mary Kay or, you know, whatever, right? You know, just let's try to avoid, uh, you know, that we hadn't had to deal with any of this, but um, I just put it in here as just a, you know, a warning. Um, you know, let's try to avoid, you know, uh, these type situations that could, could, could put, put a coach in a, in a, you know, auspicious place. So, um, coaches evaluations, you know, I'll be honest. Um, I didn't do the greatest job this year. You know, there was a thing called COVID that happened. So a lot of this kind of went down the drains. Uh, I'm going to try to do a better job with the coaches evaluations this year um, and, and, and making sure, you know, it gets done. But, you know, but what I hope you all know, you know, is I appreciate all of you. Um, and I also hope that, you know, if you have an issue, you know, come talk to me. Okay. Um, you know, and, and your my door is always open to you. Um, you can always, 
come talk with me. But, but this is what, you know, we, we do the evaluations on, right? I created a new form last year uh, and still using that form. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll do, I'll do a better job with this this year. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're going to have a full sports season. Um, maintenance staff, right? Communicate to the guys, Terry, David, uh, you know, Manuel, Salvador, Bernard, right? You know, th those, those guys do a tremendous amount of work. If you've been around at school this summer, I mean, those guys are working their humps off, right? Um, take care of them, communicate, thank them, right? Because I know sometimes, you know, uh, people can be grumpy, you know, uh, when they're tired. But, man, the, these guys, um, they do a tremendous job making us, you know, do the things that, that we're able to do. And you can't thank them enough. Um, I, and all you got to do, I mean, they, they're, they've been running around the school all summer trying to, you know, get stuff ready for, for you know, the way school is going to be this fall. It's, it's been a ton of work. So thank those guys and communicate with them, you know, as best we can. Booster Club, this is the booster board this year, just so you know. Blair Bailey is going to be the president. Um, ben Renfro uh, will be the vice president, and you can kind of see uh, down down the line there. Kelly Gillespie does membership. Uh, we had a record membership last year. Kelly is tremendous, huge part of that. Um, I think we took in just memberships last year, boosters. I think almost like forty something thousand dollars um, just on booster memberships. So. Uh, we're again, we're blessed. And then you can see Jill and Kristen Armley are doing the golf tournament and, you know, they're, they're, they're doing an awesome job too. So <clears throat> Kelly Gale or uh, Casey Velke will be the team mom coordinator, uh, team parent. So she'll be the one, if you can't find a team parent, get with Casey and, and she'll, she'll try to help you as best she can. These are just some of the items that the boosters have sponsored the last few years. We didn't do as much this year because honestly with COVID, I, I suggested, you know, let's sit on the money what we have because we don't know what's coming. Um, so we actually got a nice pot that we're sitting on, um, you know, that we're just looking for, you know, good project to, to use that for. So, um, but, but boosters are tremendous. We put a new, exhaust fan in the stadium concession so maybe it won't be hotter than Hades in there um, but we got that too so these are the gem chairs if you didn't see them right those are the dumbbells for the weight room that they paid for flooring the, the storage uniform storage scoreboards coaches appreciation man we tried to find every way to have that this year but with all the COVID stuff, we didn't. So maybe uh, next year will be even bigger and, br and uh, better than, than uh, the year before. So uh, Booster, they, they were itching to figure out a way and just we didn't feel like we could safely do this. So, um, but, but it'll, be, it'll be back, I promise. <clears throat> Booster Club, uh, th this is the, uh, the form that's on our website. You know, again, more we can push our parents uh, to sign and to join. We added an alumni uh, level this year uh, that's only 50 bucks, um, you know, for the younger, you know, alumni and everything. So, um, all right. All right, almost done. Um, get with Becky, Dorian, you know, if you have problems with the forms, I've told you I'll get the coaching contract and the concussion statements to you. Help, help get those back to me as soon as you can, all right? And then finally, right, you know, sum it all up here, right? Let's just make sure we all do the right thing, okay? Um, you know, help me help you, help me defend you, right? Things I can't defend, right? You know, just ripping coaches, uh, you know, players, parents up one side and the down the other, right? Um, doing inappropriate things on social media, inappropriate relationships, right? Th these are things that I can't defend, right? So just don't, you know, it goes without saying, right? 
but you know, let's just do the right thing because if you do, I'll, I'll go to bat for you. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, if something does arise, um, so let, let's have, you know, always be aware there. Remember we're a direct reflection of the school. Okay. And, and, you know, represent that, that name across our chest, right? St. Joseph's Knights. All right. Um, all right. Thank you all. Appreciate all of you. I know it went a little long. We had a little more to cover. Um, but uh, please keep an eye out. Uh, I'll give you that update from the high school league as soon as I get it. Uh, and, and I know you're going to have questions, so, so get in touch. And I'll, you know, we'll, we'll work our way through it together. Um, and, and again, you got my number, both numbers. You got my email. My door is always open. If you need anything, you know, uh, come and let me help you. Okay. All right. If you got any questions, let me know. And y'all have a great evening. And uh, go Knights. Have a good night. Thanks, Eric.